All right. The quarantine is oh, officially over. Nobody gives a shit anymore. <laughs> That's right. Oh, so I'm here fun. with John Rossman. He's the client who wasn't a client. <laughs> <laughs> I marked his Someday. timber. I marked his timber twice, and we still haven't sold so, any. Someday it'll. I could turn his place into a deer hunting paradise, but he won't let me. Someday the, the timber market will come back. All right. Yeah. So we're not here to talk about timber. We're here to talk <laughs> about this. Uh, field and john likes to plant um cover crop food plots not not food plots he he's not growing deer he's growing cows okay right where'd the cows go they went down there oh they're gone already yeah they went down they got their boat. well trust me there were cows in here <laughs> god <laughs> what we want to talk about is this cover crop cocktail and this is going to be very interesting so stick with it uh, this had, tell us what was in here. There was a okay, cra raised so, crazy mix, which had what? Yeah, raised crazy fall mix. <clears throat> um, so it had daikon radish, crimson clover, oats, hairy vetch, triticale. Crap, two more I can't ever think of. Oats? Did you say oats? I said oats, yeah. Uh, uh, there's two more, and the, but it's a small percentage of the seed. I forget, always forget those two. But anyway, so I planted this. This will be the second spring for this. Well, I let it go to seed last year, and then I mowed it off. So did it reseed itself at all? It did reseed itself. Now, and the orchard grass was in the seed bank. <clears throat> yeah, the or there's some orchard grass in here, which is not good but there's very little of it. It's not hurting anything. And what you do have is what looks to be uh, some red clover and some white clover. And we have some vetch left. Here's some vetch. And that's good deer forage. The grasses are not. Yeah, here's red clover here. And there is triticale, vetch, and clover in here, plus some clover that came in from the seed bank, or it may have been carried in these cow patties, okay? Yeah, that's true. So up here is, th this clover was not planted, correct? No. And this just kind of showed up on its own it was in the seed bank and this is what happens when you graze okay and what's very interesting is that the cows were on this for three days for three days four days ago correct yeah and what happened the cows you would think hey the cows are going to eat all that forage but what did they eat yeah they went through and they just took the tops of the grass off and I, I, I intentionally left them in here two days longer because I could not understand why they weren't eating all this clover. It's too rich. They don't it, want it. Exactly. So the, so the point is that, you know, I used to put horses on a big food plot that I had because I had a grass problem. The horses don't really want a lot of clover. They want grass. Yeah. Now, cows need a lot of roughage. So they ate the grass, and they left the clover alone. Not only did they leave the clover alone, but they helped the clover by taking the grass off and then turning that grass into manure. One important thing that I want to mention is this <clears throat> clover came in. I mowed this all off last year. It was basically just grass, and I mowed it all off. It had a pretty thick layer of duff on it. And whatever that duff did to the soil, as far as like changing the pH or something, I don't know what it did. Mm -hmm. But it, it by fall, this clover was it, it just took off, and I didn't yeah. plant any of it. It was already in there. Some of that has to do with weather. What's going on with the weather? We've had some crazy weather problems lately. Um, now, now we can go down and look at that that field down there. I just planted last fall with the same mix. Okay, so. This um, this mix 
how long will it last? Now you planted this last September, and if you didn't do anything with it other than graze off the, the grass, but you know, if you don't have cows, you could go over it with a high rotary mower and just mow it off. Yeah. And then you'd release that clover, right? Yep. But guaranteed, without a doubt, putting animals on your food plots to terminate the grasses is always a great idea. It's worked for me very well in the past. This this was all fox this was tail. a this was a wet site. I could see that. Yeah, it was all foxtail. Yeah, foxtail is a big problem, especially when the weather gets really hot. We got some uh, thistle in this patch. Yeah, and actually the cows will eat it. You know what? If you spray thistle and let it die, the cows love it. <laughs> I don't know why. A farmer told me that. He said if you spray the thistle. Or mow it off and let it lay there. Yeah. When it's dry, the cows will come over and eat it. All right, so this one was planted last September. Yeah. And has not been grazed. Right. Okay, so crimson clover, vetch, and that is up to my elbow. So that's, what, 12, 14 inches tall. Not only is it kind of nice looking... You see the yellow flowers, those were um, some sort of brassica that was in there, going to seed. Yeah, there was a few daikon radish I seen that went to seed, but this, the, the deer had grazed this down last fall. It was no more than an inch high. So you planted it, what, early September? Early September. I'm not joking, it was no more than an inch high. They hammered the crap out of this field. And it lasted all winter, and then as soon as it warmed up in the spring, it took off. As soon as the rains came. Yeah. Yep. And now look at it. It's, it's awesome. And there's a good, good bit of deer around here. Yes, there is. And it, and it's, it's nice and full, so it also adds, I think, what well, you chimed in here, but some weed suppression. Oh, yeah. Because there's not a lot of light getting to the ground. Um, and I'm going to let it go to seed. And then I'm going to graze it instead of mowing it. Mm-hmm. I think if you graze graze it lightly so that there's still some crimson clover seed there and go over it with a disc, a light disking, you probably get the crimson back. I don't know. Yeah. There's ways of doing that where you could you could just disc something say buckwheat, crimson clover, and uh, even that radish, you know, that'll reseed itself. But yeah. a pure stand of radish, you wouldn't want that because there's so many seeds that it would be way too crowded if yeah. you disked it and let it go to seed. So, I mean, you talk about a, a beautiful food plot, that is unbelievable. But it's funny because the deer aren't touching it right now. They don't want it. Well, right now the, the does are all kind of scattered. They go into the far reaches True. of their 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 uh, habitat and have their babies. In yeah, we're right in the middle of fawn season here. Yeah, the babies aren't walking around a whole lot right now. So they're not moving far from them. But come fall, or even late summer when the babies are up and walking with the mama... They'll be all over this thing. What's the most deer you've ever seen in this food plot? Uh, like 25. Yeah. What's there about? This is about two acres, right? Maybe yeah. not even. Acre and a half, yeah. 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 So there you have it. Cover crop food plots. And don't, uh, don't ever plant one species. No. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. It blows my mind. Because it's too hard. Yeah. If it doesn't work, like say, say for instance, if we planted brassicas last year in the fall, everybody wants to do that. What's left out of the brassicas here? Nothing. Uh, nothing. Right. So now you have to plant something else and you have to wait for the soil to warm up. And then fawning season had come and gone. So now you have a, a fawn that's underweight. Yeah. Uh, lactation is going to be down, but with a cover crop cocktail that gets all the way through the winter, like this one, 
and comes up in the spring when the deer actually need it the most. Yeah. You know, a deer that has two fawns in her needs a thousand pounds more forage that month, that month of April, than she would have normally. So that's a lot of food she needs. And then you have to produce milk for that fawn all through the summer. And in your in your, your last video there, we were talking about the bees. The bees love this stuff. Yeah, you always want to help out your pollinators anytime you can. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what, what it ends up like this fall. Okay, so at the end of the summer, then what? What would you do when this kind of hardens off, goes to seed? What happens to this? What does it look like in August? Right. I, well, that field up there, after the crimson clover went to seed, the tr triticale headed out. That's when I decided to mow it. Now, you got to mind you, the triticale was three feet high, right? Mm -hmm. So when I mowed that off of the brush hog, all it did was create a, a, a duff. And then the clover kind of came back a little bit, but it was... That fall. Yeah, it was obviously stunted. So this particular field, though, crimson clover is an annual clover. So if you let it ripen and you mow it, it'll just come right back. It does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And with this, this, you can see how tight this is. Yeah. If that's all seed, there's no way it's not going to come back. Right. So then... You don't even have to plant anything else. No. Just mow it. Just mow it. And come right back. Or graze it. You could also put, if you wanted to convert it over to a clover plot, then you could just put clover seed on. The crimson clover will fizzle out next year. And then the following fall, your white and red clover mix will come up really strong. Yeah. You never want to clear the plate. Right. Always want to have food in your food plot. All right. 